Hey, everybody, and welcome to Rocksmith Encore. It's Monday, and that means that it's a weird day for us to stream. But we're going to have a lot of fun today, uh, actually. So welcome to Rocksmith Encore. My name is Dan Amrick. I am the community developer on behalf of Rocksmith. And what we do on Mondays, once a month, the last Monday of the month traditionally, is uh, Rocksmith Encore is a free-form show. We change the topic. We change the approach every uh, month, every time that we do a show. And it can be anything from music history to the physics of sound to how to improve your guitar to how effects work. Basically, if it's of interest to somebody who's learning how to play guitar or bass or currently knows how to play guitar or bass, we figure like, hey, this is a good place to uh, sort of stretch out. This was a Brian McCune idea long ago. And uh, look at how it has taken root. Uh, today, uh, you know, uh, we're out of ideas. No, uh, actually, we're all about tiny ideas today. Uh, the topic of today's show is stupid guitar tricks. And that came out of just a conversation that we had in the office uh, where everybody has a little something that they do uh, that sometimes is in the service of a song, but sometimes is not. Sometimes it's just like a fun sound effect that you might be able to make or uh, something like that, you know? Uh, everybody has sort of little habits that they do when they start warming up on guitar or bass, something like that. So uh, knowing that we have many very talented musicians uh, on our note tracking team, we have folks who have many years of e experience playing live with bands, we have studio folks, we have, uh, we have uh, instructors and, and all kinds of, you know, different varied experience. Like, I'm sure you all have some little goofy little habit or some song that told that made a sound that you went oh how do you make that sound it's it's not it, it's just sort of like a trick right but it's like your little party trick like oh you know how to do this thing right so we're gonna try to do some of those today and one of the people who actually offered the most is Andrew Levin uh, Andrew is one of our newest note trackers uh, so he's gonna kick off the show we will have uh, code giveaways throughout the day as well so if you are uh, here for the freebies uh, don't worry Black Widow 9 is in our chat room that's Tawny hi Tawny and uh, she is going to give away uh, various uh, DLC codes that I gave her before the show I don't remember what they are so it's great it'll be a, a surprise to all of us uh, but uh, hey Andrew how are you good Dan how you doing I am doing I am doing okay Cool. Uh, you uh, were very enthusiastic about this. Is <laughs> this because you are the new guy and you want to just put your stamp out there? No, so it's, people it's just because I'm really stupid. Okay, and, good. Uh, the stupid I, guitar I, tricks kind I, of align with my intelligence. You I know, was going to say that, but I was like, <laughs> it would be cruel if I said it. So, uh, yeah, actually, when you, when you rattled off, you're like, oh, I can do this. Oh, I can also do that. And I, sometimes I, I like to do this. And, oh, I heard this one and I want to do this. And this is... I, I was just like, wow, that's great. You're going to kick off the show. If, if nobody else is on, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But most of what you're talking about here are little things that you can mm -hmm. teach in just a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah. So you'll want to go back and look at this later and try it. I know a lot of people during the encores do play their guitars while we do this because they're trying to follow along when we do something instructional. So in the past, we've done instructional things like how to improvise on guitar and how to take your playing beyond where you make already be plateaued and like really serious things. This is not supposed to be serious, but you will want to go back and see if you can do some of this stuff at home. It's very much like follow the leader. So leader, okay. you said you were going to start off with bending a note and sliding into it. Okay. Yeah, this is just kind of a stupid thing that I learned uh, when I was younger that I think is really cool. Joe Satriani does this one a lot. Okay, well um, then it's not that that's stupid, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Could I get a dirty tone by chance? Oh, oh see, you had oh. said this was a clean tone. But yes, yeah. we can so give you a dirty tone. that's all it is. Tone. You can do it with a bend. Basically, uh, you slide into a note with your third finger. And then you just take your first finger and slide up to it. You know. Oh, you, okay. So you're actually sliding into the, the note twice. Yeah. Wow, that's super great. I thought it was, I thought it was bending. Oh, you can do that with a bend, too. Okay, so you're releasing the bend when you go two frets up, so that you're bending up a whole step, and then when you slide, you're releasing the bend, but you're hitting the same note, so yep. you get that those waves. That's really cool. I, yeah. I mean, like, n yes, I totally want to steal that. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a fun one, especially, you know, if you're playing some blues. It sounds wonderful. You're playing the same note twice, but it sounds like it's a different note because you've mm -hmm. approached it, and you're doing it so fluidly. That, that I mean, that is the key. So if you're going to practice this, you should do it as fluidly as humanly possible. Totally. But yeah, practice bending and then sliding and releasing at the same time. That's not something that we normally 
show people how to do in the context of a song. Totally, yeah. It's not something that's really all that common. But I mean, I think the cool thing about the guitar, and one of the reasons I was really excited about s the stupid guitar tricks, other than being stupid, is right. that <laughs> I, uh, I've always been, and as a lot of people probably know from being on the team, I really like weird sounds. I really like playing with effects and pedals and uh, doing synth design and that yes. kind of stuff. And one thing that I realized really about a year ago, I was really kind of trying to delve deep and do a lot of synth sound design stuff. And I kind of challenged myself to design a bunch of sounds using guitar effects. And I realized that the guitar is one of the most versatile instruments in terms of the sounds that it can create. Um, you know, so you have kind of the more vocal element, lead guitar is kind of, you can bend the strings and get that vocal element. You can <laughs> play percussively, which, you know, with distortion isn't the greatest. You can play chords, you know, but okay. yeah, <laughs> but you get the point. So, so, sure. so that's why I think, <laughs> there you go. So you basically have all of the instruments of the band right here. You got your percussion, your bass, your melodies. <laughs> nice. Anyways, you have so much. So, so, so the point is that you can do a lot of really weird sounds with sure. the guitar and make it sound like just about anything. Just about anything. Yeah. So, uh, oh, did you bring your pencil? Because yep. you told me. All right. So <laughs> this was called the. And, 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 and this is nice. I brought my pencil. Give me something to write on, man. I, uh, I. So I just have an, a list here of what people said that they wanted to do, and I shortened them. So some of them, I'm not even sure what they mean. <laughs> but most of these have been kept for me, so they would be a surprise to me on the air. You called this the pencil primus trick. We're yeah. using a pencil eraser <laughs> to simulate some less Claypool-y sounds on your yeah. guitar, though. Mm -hmm. Well, Les Claypool actually would put drumsticks or just sticks on his fingers and do oh, because he's less Claypool. He's less Claypool, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I grew up. My guitar teacher was mainly a bass player, and he did a lot of cool double slap stuff. And so I always kind of wanted to emulate that on the guitar. But the it doesn't quite sound right if you're slapping on a guitar, you know. You can kind of make it sound okay. Well, you can make it sound mm -hmm. okay. But if you use a pencil, I discovered this. This is the stupidest guitar trick I know. Uh, <laughs> this actually bounces <laughs> the eraser. So I haven't done it in a while. I used to do it a lot more. I gotta practice it. This <laughs> is the no. This is the essence of a stupid guitar trick. Anyways, that's you, great. <laughs> you can also maybe make it a gent stick if you're sure. There you if go. If you have a seven string or an eight string. <laughs> now, is that something that you came up with, or was that just like something you learned in music school? It was just like so. Was it somebody else's <laughs> stupid guitar trick, no. or is this one hundred percent Andrew Levin? I was just doing my homework in high school one day, <laughs> and I picked up my guitar. <laughs> that's even better. I like that. That's the story very much. Yeah. That's great. Uh, okay, you've got something called the chicken cord. Yeah. Um. And this is this this one really confused me because I was like, no matter how I tried <laughs> to rap, like I can understand playing a, a a string with a drumstick or or a pencil eraser or whatever, but I was like, what the hell is the chicken cord and how did it get the name and what does it mean? So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's no! start by what what is the chord <laughs> voicing that you're doing and um. let's explain to people where you're playing it. Yeah, so I actually uh, learned this one from my guitar teacher growing up. We he, one of the songs we used to play a lot was the Chicken by Jaco Pastorius, you know. Okay. And so you know the bass line is pretty well known, <laughs> right? Um, but he w he taught me how to comp over it, how to play chords over it, and he always said, "Play the chicken chord." And so he just taught me to that, and that's always been the chicken chord. Basically, <laughs> what it is, if you take a um, uh, the eighth fret of the D string, the sixth fret of the G string, the eighth fret of the B string, and the ninth fret of the E string, you play that. It's already kind of this dissonant type of chord. Yeah. You you're gonna mute it, and then on the upstroke, play the chord, but bend just the top. You are actually bending all the strings. Like yeah. you're, you're bending you're everything but your index. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's great. So your index finger doesn't bend, but you bend the ring, middle, and pinky. Yeah. Or I, on I, the upstroke. Yeah. It may. That's sound, cool. It may sound a little more chicken-like with actually just the top two strings. 
Yes. But, um, it yeah. sounds it sounds full blown funk when you do it with all three strings mm-hmm. being bent. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Now I understand why it's called the chicken chord. Yeah. Is do you know the name of that chord specifically? Is yeah. it like what is it? Well, I guess technically, or at least the shape, so that you could do it in different places. Obviously, you can do this in different keys. Yeah. So it depends on the context of how you're playing it. Uh, this chord just by itself is just a B minor six chord. It's okay. just a B minor chord with a with a major six. So, I mean, you could play it if you're like, for example, in A minor, you could slide it down a half step. Sure. Slide it down a fret. And it has kind of a nice kind of rich quality to it. Right. Well, because you can get the A on the bass if you want it mm-hmm. open. Yeah. Um, it's used in... She's not a girl who misses much. Yeah. 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 So it's, you know, used in a lot of that kind of context. But if you then... <laughs> then, it, then it has a different sound, right? Um, but She's in the context, not a girl who misses clucks. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in, in the context of the chicken, because the chicken is in uh, major key, it's in B flat, well B flat dominant, so kind of halfway between major and minor. Um, it's kind of got that funk sound. So if you play this minor chord over that, you know, it gives it that just kind of yeah dissonant sound. It's, it's, it's so so technically it's a B minor six chord, but in context it's really like a B seven sharp nine. So yeah. Anyways. Oh. Oh. Rotate Sorry. a bit. Sorry. Yeah. People are asking for close-ups too. Of course. Uh, full disclosure, we're having problems with a close-up cam today. We had actually planned to use it, and we've uh, we've got to call in to see if somebody else knows more about this than we do. But. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, we will do close-ups if at all possible, but I appreciate you explaining exactly where your fingers are because, again, if you roll this back, you'll be able to uh, to take this as a master class in doing dumb stuff on your guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're just joining us a little bit late, hi, welcome. You have barely missed any of the stupid guitar tricks. My name's Dan Amrick. I'm your community developer. This is Andrew Levin. He's kicking us off with uh, stupid guitar tricks. Somebody pointed out, yes, I should be doing the whole thing as David Letterman today. <laughs> uh, so uh, what we've got... Uh, uh, have you have you seen this, Andrew? Have you have you seen the chicken chord? <laughs> uh, I basically asked everybody in the in the uh, in the studio, if you will, uh, to uh, to tell me what's the dumbest thing you've done on guitar, and uh, that's what they came up with. We all have little tricks, little uh, licks, and little uh, stupid things that we wind up getting into the habit of doing, or maybe we've learned something interesting in the context of a larger song that would actually benefit you, uh, you know, outside, or or you just remember it because, like, wow, it's the only place I use it. It's a kind of just a stupid little trick, but it gets across what you want to get across musically for that thing. So if you're looking for more tricks in your so-called trick bag, that's what this show is about. And we're not even done with Andrew, because, Andrew, you said cascading open string scale. Yeah, so there's actually, uh, I was talking with Sam about this earlier, so there's actually two of these that I'd like to uh, demonstrate. So first of all, uh, one thing that I think a lot of people don't really think about is the guitar is really in the key of G major or E minor, right? Okay. Um, all of the it basically the whole um, guitar fits within that key. E minor is essentially the same thing as G major, right? So with those keys, you have a lot more open strings that you can use. So one scale that I like to use sometimes at the end of a song, just kind of messing with it or using different parts of the scale is just gives it that kind of nice little, it almost makes it sound a little more like a harp. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so I can kind of break that one down. It's kind of a stretchy thing. Yeah, I've heard Chet Atkins play a lot of mm-hmm. riffs like that, where he goes down a scale, but it's all, they flow into each other very smoothly. Yeah, and Sam actually has a bunch of those that he's going to be oh, sharing okay, great. later that are, that are really cool. And his are, I think, maybe a little more bluesy than this one. Uh, I really like some of the stuff he was playing. Um, but this one is just kind of a little, the, th- the reason I kind of wanted to include it in Stupid d- Guitar Tricks is because you really can only use it in the key of G major okay. or, or E minor. You can use it to an E minor. Right, um, but uh, I can uh, break yeah, that break down. Yeah, break it down. Yeah, please. So I'm starting on a G right here, and this is kind of a stretch because you're going to have to use your pinky. Um, so the G first finger is going to be on the third fret of the high E string. Your pinky is going to go to the seventh fret of the B string. Right. So you get that half step, which is one of my favorite sounds. It's really kind of shrill by itself, but yeah. in the context it sounds cool. So anyways, you have that. 
and then you're going to let go with your first finger and play the open E string. So the first part, just those three notes, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, third finger, your uh, ring finger, and put it on the seventh fret of the G string. And then you're going to use your index finger to play the fifth fret of the G string. So, so, so far we got... Sorry. Because the next note we're going to play is that open B string. So the, the point is that we're basically just playing a G major scale, but we're hitting all the open strings that we can. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to hit the seventh fret of the D string, and then we're going to hit the open G string. So that's the whole scale. But wait, there's more. We're going to hit the fourth fret of the D string. So now we have the second octave. So that's the first octave. Second octave down, fourth fret of the D string, first finger. Then Pinky's going to hit the seventh fret of the A string. Then open D. Then we're going to hit the 8th fret of the E string, 7th fret of the E string, open A, G. So you do resolve it back to G by the time you're done. Yeah. So it's pretty tricky. I practiced it a little bit before I was coming in. It sounds, again, it sounds beautiful. It sounds like the kind of thing that you could just sort of noodle on on the couch. You know it's the G major scale, so you know when it sounds right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's going to take a little practice and, and dexterity to uh, to pull it off. Yeah, and and it it, it really I think the, the hardest part is really the first two notes, which is just the stretch. Being able to hold those two notes together takes takes some practice. Use your pinky. Yeah, and also I think that one thing that a lot of people do in the beginning that hinders their success is playing with the pads of their fingers rather than the very tip. I am guilty of that. Yeah, and. Uh, the, the main reason you want to play with the tips of your fingers is so that you can play these chords, right, if I'm playing. If I'm using the pad of my finger, I'm going to mute that string accidentally. That's what it sounds like when I play lead guitar <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, so one thing you can do is you can practice. I mean, this might yeah, be a good, I should, ex probably this, this might be a good exercise for you to do, actually. Um, I, would be, I would love to be able to make that sound. That yes. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the other cascading scale that I was going over with Sam mm -hmm. is, uh, I'll do it in G major. Well, is this G major? Uh, there it's G. So this is one that I use a lot when I'm playing live. Um, so basically when you're, t when you're doing, I'm going to put my, you can put here. that. Yeah. <laughs> when Make sure you take that with you, by the way. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's mine. That's mine. This is <laughs> so when you're doing, we are not <laughs> raffling that off right now. We're raffling off some uh, codes. So if you're uh, if you're not currently uh, in the raffle to get some free uh, Rocksmith codes, you should do that right now. We're giving away some Steam DLC. You're not going to get a saliva soaked pick from Andrew Levin. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please stop asking for that. Uh, yes. All right. So uh, number two here. Um, so first thing I want to mention is these artificial harmonics. There's two ways of going about it. The first way that I learned is using my index finger. Another thing I wanted to mention is I use nails when I play. Okay. Um, so that helps me a lot with these. Um, but what you're going to do is basically, let's say you're at the fourth fret. You're going to go 12 frets up, so the uh, 16th fret. Um, you're going to use your index finger, and you're going to lightly put your index finger um, over the 14th fret, like you would with a natural harmonic, right? Just lightly putting my finger over the fret and then playing it. So I'm going to create basically a 12th fret harmonic by putting my f uh, first finger down with my uh, left hand, then putting my first finger down, index finger an octave up with my right hand, and then I'm going to strum with my uh, ring finger like this, right? Mm -hmm. This one took me some practice. So a lot of times when I'm uh, finishing a song, I'll use this. And as I said, 
I'm somebody who likes getting a lot of weird sounds, and to me, it kind of makes the guitar sound a little more like a harp. Right. Which I really like. Now, the second way that you can do it, where you can uh, do these kind of cascading scales, is by rather than using your uh, ring finger to, to pluck, you're going to use your thumb. Uh, so you kind of have to invert your hand a little bit. Is this visible over there, how I'm doing this? Kind of. Maybe, sort of. I don't know. I mean... We could probably try the other camera, the two shot of the of the stools, yeah. maybe. And this lick I copped uh, directly from Tommy Emmanuel. I saw oh him yes. doing, doing a talk about that. Um, and uh, basically, because I was always doing this, you know, for a long time, and I would hear these guys do these, you know, crazy fast licks that I can't even really do. Um, and I was like, how do they do that? And I looked it up, and Tommy Emmanuel uses his thumb. So he'll put his, uh, let's say I'm on the G string on the fifth fret. I go up to the 17th fret, octave higher. All right, I use my index finger lightly to create that harmonic, and then I'm going to strum with my thumb. And then that leaves my other fingers to strum huh. the higher strings. Okay. Right? So what I'm doing here is I'm playing the 5th fret of the G string. I'm creating that artificial harmonic on the 17th fret, and then I'm using my ring finger to strum the E string, and then doing a pull-off. And then you can do that same thing here. And the next string down. So that's the Tommy, Tommy Emmanuel deck that he... But I realize, basically, if you keep going, you get a minor scale. Okay. And then if you change this to this, you... Well, actually, that's a full minor. What did you change? I just changed, uh, rather than pulling off from the 7th fret, mm -hmm. the 6th fret. Okay. Yeah. So 7th fret, 6th fret. Okay. Right. Um, so, yeah. That's that. That's lovely. And if you're going to steal from anybody, steal from Tommy Emmanuel. Yeah. He yeah. is uh, a fantastic guitarist. And I don't think a lot of people in America know as much as they should. He's He's mm -hmm. much bigger overseas uh, but he's he's one of Chet's CGPs, the certified guitar That's players. What I was about you know, to say. yeah. He, uh, <laughs> Chet Atkins had a thing where he uh, he would bestow the title of CGP after your name. He was the only person to do it, and he only gave it to a handful of people that he felt were like worthy of the title of "You are a certified guitar player." And he did it for uh, he did it for uh, Tommy Emmanuel. He did it for Jerry Reed. I believe he also did it for Mark Knopfler. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. There's some are out there on the on the internet. So I'm sure there's a list of who Chet said these are the guys that make the make the cut. Uh, okay, uh, we have another one from you, uh, and I think this is where we get into some dirty tones. Uh, Randy Rhodes, Hammer on Taps. Oh, yeah. So uh, again, like that was Tommy Emmanuel. That was a Tommy Emmanuel trick, but I, I take it this is something that you've heard in Randy Rhodes songs uh, or in his playing. Uh, more than once. Kind of. Basically, t uh, Randy Rhodes uh, always overdubbed himself playing his solos. So if you listen to Crazy Train, there's that one section that's like... Yes. Right? And if you play it, it just doesn't sound right, right? That's because he's playing it twice, and there's a bunch of flams happening, and it makes it sound a lot faster than it is. Oh. So I had a friend who told me a long time ago, basically, what you can do is you can tap the note that you're about to hammer onto. <laughs> doesn't quite sound right because I need to practice it. But I get I get the sense of it, though. <laughs> so are you going yeah. for a triplet feel of, like, pick, hammer, hammer? Yeah. So are you, which, which, which hand is hammering first? My right hand's hammering first. Okay, so uh, pick, hammer, hammer. Well, no picking. Uh, oh, no picking. Tap. Tap. Pull. Hammer. Pull. Okay, so they're just alternating hella fast. Because exactly. if you do it with one <laughs> finger, it's not going to be fast enough. It's not going to sound right. Yeah. But if you hit it with both hands. Yeah. and a uh, lot Even I could probably do that. Yeah, you could. <laughs> it's a really stupid one. No, but, I, you know, I'm sure that unlocks something for people watching because they're like, how does he play that fast? And how is he doing that? And, oh, well, like that. Like, you just use more hands. Yeah, use yeah. more fingers. Well, again, he was just um, uh, uh, overdubbing. So he was just going... As fast as he could, right? That. And then he was playing it twice, so it made it sound bigger. Okay. And it made it sound faster because sure. he wasn't playing in time with himself. So if you kind of do this, it kind of gives a sense that there's two guitars. Sure. Right? 
And then also I would say some delay would help. Um, yeah. Oh, is that delay? Cool, there we go. Cool. I also have this nail that I was about to pull <laughs> accidentally. Yeah. Okay, I have the nail on my middle finger, which makes it a little harder up on those high frets. So anyways, that's a stupid trick, but it's all right. no, <laughs> if it's you can practice it, then it, it totally cool. works. Yeah. Um, I got one more from you, which mm -hmm. which is the one that made me smile the most because I have no idea what this means. How to whammy down to an <laughs> E flat or a D without the band noticing. <laughs> and that was obviously what, what made me go, okay, you got to show me. Uh, how on earth can you use your whammy bar as the guitarist in the band without the band noticing, let alone down possibly a whole step? And why would you want to do that? Like, hey guys, don't 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 worry. I'm just gonna play in a different key. It's fine. Well, basically, all you gotta do is super. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it changes on the different guitars, right? Uh, so so like this, the tension on this guitar is different than mine, so it's gonna be a sure. little different. And also, I think it's a little easier with a floating bridge. This this bridge isn't floating, so you kind of. Oh, to okay. But I don't think we have a floating bridge up here. Uh, well, we have Pody's. Is that Pody's uh, pit patchwork caster? Well, it's not, yeah, it's okay. It doesn't doesn't really. Matter not, I mean, I'll throw you into the fire, yeah. man. You know, let's. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say like we're playing a song. It's an E flat. I would. It's not the kind of thing that you're gonna do really fast, right? Right. But let's say that you're playing a song in E flat. You know. And then you're gonna end. <laughs> That's it. Nobody ever notices. And if you're good, <laughs> if you if you're familiar with your whammy bar, then you can just go right to it because you know where the where the depress is. is. Yeah, where you need to hold it. There we it. go. There we go. So I can just play. <laughs> Nobody will ever notice. <laughs> I swear. No one, no one will ever <laughs> notice that at all. I was gonna say we we have Chris Wu's Bigsby here if you want to do it with the Bigsby, but that would probably be just as weird. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, practice is what we're we're getting back to. Practice, is make sure you practice. <laughs> oh my God, that was great. I you know yeah I couldn't tell. I had no idea how you were making these phantom notes appear. There we go. See. Yes, that was very good. <laughs> no, wait. Why would you want to do that instead of just fretting the natural note on on, on its proper fret? Because it doesn't exist. It only goes down to an E. Oh, oh, I see. If you want a low note. I understand now. You know, okay, so instead of tun tuning to D yeah, or getting it. some sort of D drop tuner assembly, yeah. you can, if you're smart and clever and can really <laughs> nail that note as well as Andrew did, or better, <laughs> then uh, no one will notice that you do not have a detuned guitar. Yeah, and actually that is one that I do use somewhat frequently when I'm playing with, especially a lot of jazz groups, or uh, they... Well, they're playing in, in like, e H-sharp, right? <laughs> I mean, like... Well, E-flat is the most common... E-flat and B-flat are the most common keys sure. in jazz, because B-flat is a C on certain saxophones, and mm -hmm. E-flat Yeah, is I was going to say, usually right? it comes from horns, right? Is yeah. Yeah, so if you're playing a song in E flat and you want to hit that low note and you've been playing for an hour and you're getting <laughs> kind of bored or whatever, <laughs> you're just, you're, you know, you're playing this jazz tune. There we go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I understand the function of it now. So thank yeah. you. Because I was like, why would you do something without the band noticing? Yeah. And yeah, it, but it, it's it's unlikely that the band's going to go, wait a minute, he's tuned to E standard in the middle of the song. <laughs> and like, how did he hit that low note? And it's like, okay. So, you know, I'm I'm sort of notoriously hardtail when it comes to guitars. I, I want, you know, like Fender hardtails, and like the Gibson stop, uh, stop tail bridge. This is the first <laughs> reasonable case I've seen for having a floating trim. Uh, yet, so uh, I'm a total f floating trim guy. Are you on the on the fenders? Yeah, I just think yeah, I, don't know. I like the way they feel. All right, I like. Them. Well, I need you to float on out of here because yes. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for thank all you. of your stupid tricks. Yeah. Those were both <laughs> tricky and stupid. Yeah, uh, but I uh, yeah, I, I will be watching. I'll be going back to this and then coming to you and then how wait how do you do this thing again? Thank you. Th those were all really awesome. And if people want, I can maybe the the uh, cascading arpeggios one. Yeah. 
that a one little ASCII a little tab or something like that yeah. would be great. If somebody uh, hasn't already built it, I assume yeah. you know that somebody in the chat room has been like, "No, guys, this is how you do it." Yeah, if somebody wants a tab, I'd be happy to write that out. We yeah, can, we, we can, can throw it. that in the forums. Like okay. that's perfect. You can just do a little ASCII quote and say like, "Here's that. Here's that cascading thing." I think that would be very helpful. Okay. If you send it to me in an email, I'll make sure it gets on the forums. How's that? Sounds good. Shanks. Uh, hey, everybody, you have come to Rocksmith Encore. This is our bonus stream that we do once a month, generally the last Monday of the month. And uh, today, uh, the topic is stupid guitar tricks. That is, little things that you've learned over the years, or rather, little things that our note trackers have used over the years, uh, have learned at either as part of other songs or uh, just random fun things that they stumbled upon themselves or that their friends did. Or maybe you heard it in a record and they're like, how do you do that? And then they figured out how to do that. They don't always really fit in any given song. Uh, it's not necessarily something that you need to do, but uh, they're the little the little jokes that g sort of guitarists share with each other, I suppose, to a certain extent. So uh, when it came to stupid guitar tricks, uh, uh, I had several people say, oh, I, I got a thing. I know a thing that we can do. One of those people was our very own Brian Chu, who never gets bored playing jazz, and but probably Whoa. has played jazz for about 14 hours straight, I would assume. <laughs> I've seen you play with Super Soul Bros uh -huh. at E3 yeah. and do like really long sets at a lot of these things yeah. like you can't you, you can't stop there are people are like do the other mario song no the other 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 mario song yeah like those are hard gigs. yeah nothing nothing to do but harder for horn players because their lips start falling off sure because they're literally doing raspberries the entire right time. the entire time like for yeah pressed up against like metal and for you yeah. know 45 minutes at a time it's yeah. just like well, uh, I'm really glad uh, you're here, uh, and Me thank too. you for, uh, for, for doing this. Uh, we are doing giveaways as well throughout the show. Uh, I believe the first of three code drops has, has done dropped already. Uh, so we'll do another one uh, a little bit later in the show, uh, and I think we're actually going to do it during our break. But uh, we are giving away some, uh, some random stuff for Steam that I found that I thought uh, sort of... Uh, we don't have a lot that matches the theme. I always try to match the giveaway codes to the theme based on what I have on hand. But I did go with sort of some of the stranger songs uh, and, and things w that are known, you know, artists that are known for making distinctive sounds. So that's the only tenuous link. But uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps you won't care because it's free and you just want free songs. So we'll be giving more of those later. So uh, the first one that I have for Brian Shu one of our many note trackers here, is left hand hammer on and pull offs with a harmonic slide. I think oh I yeah. know what this one is. Okay, yeah. Because the minute you played it, I said, that sounds like Van Halen. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely something that you hear um, EVH do, <laughs> as well as... Oh, uh, are, you, are, are you on a, a three initials basis with Mr. <laughs> yeah, Van Halen? Yeah. And uh, like Zach Wilde will do, do a lot of okay. this too. Basically, you just you hammer on stuff with your left hand. So let's just take... It can be any notes really mm -hmm. you just have to keep be able to keep the sound going with your left hand so i'll just do this so that's on the g string for uh fourth fret and second fret okay and, just and basically what you do is you take a finger or your or the side of your palm and you basically just lightly touch um actually almost a anywhere along the string very lightly and you get this sound it's awesome. It sounds like a computer vomiting yeah. for one, <laughs> but uh, it's yeah, it's <laughs> it's like a it's like a cool alternative to um, like a pick, a pick slide, slide. Mm -hmm. right. right? Which yeah. is a very traditional thing. And again, you know that that in and of itself is kind of a stupid guitar trick, and it's yeah. it's almost it's a, a cliche a, at right. this point. But yeah, the tiddly tiddly tiddly. Yeah. tiddly I, I never knew. Uh, and then that you you can actually um, get it so that you can get kind of a palm muted sound and uh -huh. then lightly lift your hand a little bit so you're still touching it but you can get kind of like a so I'm hammering it and, and go from one go, to the other you go into it yeah oh. so that's that's kind of a cool that's super great when you're transitioning between the yeah, two. Yeah, and you cool would do sound. that more with your palm than with your with the, your index finger, be, just because you can put more pressure or you can put more surface area from your hand it, on it, it to it make really that depends. transition. It okay. really depends. I, th I think with my finger, 
Actually, it's about the same. Oh, uh, it's okay. about the same pressure. Either way, uh, yeah. there's practice involved. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so do this when when your parents and your loved ones are not around, <laughs> uh, so that they're, they're just why are you doing this for half an hour? Just uh, yeah. you know, you're having pick some new frets. You know, <laughs> uh, no, that that's super great, and that's a far easier. And again, I I, I hear that, and to me, that's iconic with '80s metal. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and '80s metal was famous for a lot of those sort of stupid guitar tricks. Yeah, and just yeah, like yeah. Ah, I made a funny sound, check it out. Right. Um, so yeah, it's just a cool sound effect. I I dig it. Okay, you and you it on any string. You showed me one the other day that was bending behind the fret hand. Oh yeah, so I think this is uh, from what I remember. I learned this a long time ago, and I think my teacher said that guys like Randy Rhodes, when he was playing his Les Paul that didn't have a whammy or something, right. he would use this trick to kind of simulate a whammy. So this is kind of the uh, this is kind of almost the same. Uh, technique with your left hand. So on on my left hand, let's just take. Um, uh, actually, actually, could I have some more distortion? You want the dirt? So I'm just gonna. <laughs> you wanted <laughs> dirt. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be hammering and pulling off um, on the same string on the ninth and eleventh fret, or I'm gonna give myself some space to reach over to behind where my fretting hand is. And basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to. Just keep this going. That looks like it hurts, Drew. It kind of does because it's going under my fingernails right ow, now. Ow, ow. But uh, <laughs> if, 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 if you get a good grip on it, you, it kind of simulates that sound. Of yeah, doing like, this. like you would be doing a little bit of a vibrato yeah. bar. So, so, I mean, something that you can kind of do, do with it, too, is... Um, if you need a hand bending up to higher heights, this is kind of dumb. You don't really have to do this, but it looks cool. You can it like does look cool. You can like really pull it super far. That's and super great. Yeah. I mean, uh, also this is something that finally you can put your lead singer to work. <laughs> you can practice this as a two-man act <laughs> where like yeah, you know you're totally. playing the other person comes over and yanks on it for you. It saves your fingers because what is the lead singer doing? Totally, nothing. Totally. Uh, trust me on that. The lead singer is doing nothing. Uh, that's super great, but yeah. again, that that hurts like It, it kind of does because it's it, like my fingernails are really short right now, right. and they were just like kind of <laughs> in between. So, so at your own risk, please do not destroy <laughs> your hands while while playing Rocksmith or pa while practicing dumb tricks outside of Rocksmith. Yeah, um, and I I guess the next one is a cu cu couple tapping tricks. Yeah, it just says bend and tap tricks, and Anthony had some of these uh, on his his uh, his as well, so I think we're going to get a second player. Yeah. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is Rocksmith Encore, and what we're doing today is Stupid Guitar Tricks. Uh, Encore is a freeform series where we change it up every week, or every month, every uh, last Monday of every month. We do a different topic that we hope will be of interest to people who play or are trying to learn how to play guitar, uh, but it's not necessarily stuff that's covered by Rocksmith, the fastest way to learn to play guitar, uh, which is the software you know and love and that these folks uh, are uh, the folks that create the DLC uh, that you play uh, when you practice guitar. So I ask them, what do you know that's not really within the realm of anything super useful or so specific to some uh, context that you don't do it very often, but it's kind of a fun trick when you get to do it. And so that's why we're on Stupid Guitar Tricks today. Uh, Brian Shu, now joined by Anthony Martinez. Hi, yeah. Anthony Martinez. Hey, Dan Emmerich. How Brian are you? Brian Shu, how's That's it going? Right. Brian Shu and Anthony Martinez, ladies and gentlemen. Anthony Martinez, Brian Shu, Dan Emmerich. I'm Dan Emmerich. I'm your community <laughs> developer. And uh, I guess uh, the tricks aren't the only things that are stupid right now. So um, <laughs> bend and tap tricks. You, w One of you started doing this at my desk to, to talk about it, and then the yeah. other person came over and said, oh, wait, I, can, I know something like that too. So there may yeah. be some overlap, but I think it's worth having each of you explain, even if it's the s it winds up being the same technique. Oh, Maybe sure. you have a, wi a mild variation on it that would be more comfortable to somebody. But you know, when you're teaching guitar stuff, I always find that getting multiple voices is better. So, mm -hmm. uh, so what are you talking about at the core here? So um, I am talking about bending notes on the G string and then going up five frets from where I'm fretting with the hand that I'm using to bend and then tapping. Uh, that fret. So, for example, uh, say I'm playing um, A minor pentatonic. You're playing right? A minor pentatonic. So, so if <laughs> thank you, Shu. <laughs> awesome. So it's paying off already. So uh, she's making me sound good. I 
think I'm a little out of tune, but she's making me sound really good. <laughs> 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 or maybe that's chorus or something. So, um, you know, it's it's typical to bend this note. And it, that's the third note in the A minor pentatonic scale. So it's that D, but an octave up. Mm-hmm. That's a common lick there, sure. right? Mm-hmm. Bend and then resolution. So if I were to bend this D up a whole step and then tap one, two, three, four, five frets up. You can do things like that. Mm-hmm. That's um, very nice. And it doesn't matter where you bend on the G string. If as we long as you're G five minor, frets up. Exactly. If we're in G minor uh, pentatonic. You can do things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very simple, very straightforward. Um, so it takes it up to G. Right. So so if I'm doing this bend, if we go back to A minor pentatonic, I'm bending that D, right, up a whole step. If I tap five frets up, that's A. So I recognize that from the opening of, I believe it's Fools by Van Halen from Women and Children First. This is like, or, or from, uh, from not from Women and Children First. It's, uh, what's the other one? Um, yeah, it is. It's Women and Children First. How dare I doubt myself on my Van Halen knowledge? Uh, <laughs> but I, I recognize that from the opening uh, there, and you know I've heard it other places too. But I always wondered, like, oh, are they just hammering on? Like, how do you get your pinky to do? No, it's a right hand because it's five frets. It's hard to get up there, and you can't hold the bend if oh, you do it with the same hand. Absolutely, and and um, you know you can have fun with it too. You can tap five frets up um, on the G string really fast mm-hmm. during the the bend and release. So if we're in A minor. I feel like a gunman is coming into town. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does have like a, a Western <laughs> twang about yeah. it. But yeah, it's... The town would never be the same after the lone stranger came <laughs> this by. This Friday. <laughs> you, know, you know something that's really interesting about that technique is mm-hmm. um, basically what you're doing there mm-hmm. is this. Right? Yes. But you're kind of doing it in a way that almost emulates a singer s- like kind of doing a gliss and then going into falsetto. Yes. It's right. It's that is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'll... I'll it's uh, very vocal. I'll um, tune up again really quickly. All that bending put my yeah. guitar out of tune. So, yeah, and I know you have some uh, some examples to show as well, Shu. I could, I could play. Um, I could <laughs> even vamp on a chord progression or something while you... While you uh, play, I'm not a tune. but um, here, basically, I have uh, a tune. Oh, cool! So ex- I can always fill, guys. If you need to get your guitars together, expanding on that <laughs> technique. So um, basically, that's just kind of a uh, one string thing, and mm-hmm. you you definitely hear a lot of guys like Van Halen do this all the time. Like they'll even move it around, like <laughs> like kind of tap up and down. Um, but something that's actually that's not used as much is um, in a double stop esque context. So um, okay. like uh, you, you get like a nice little fake pedal steel out of yeah, that. Yeah, so, nice, yeah. so you can get a lot of these pedal steel kind of licks, but it's not very common. I I don't believe I've seen a lot of guitar players do this. So what are you doing exactly? So what I'm doing here, so we're in the key of, um, it's kind of an A dominant thing, so it's like um, more of a major sound. A mixolydian, to be uh, specific, what scale that you're playing. And I'm gonna take um, the 12th fret and the 10th fret, uh, so B and E, um, respectively, and I'm gonna do this bend. This is a pretty common bend kind of more in country music, you know, you'll hear stuff like this. Or whatever. Sure. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking that double, I'm taking that double stop and I'm getting this really kind of, um, I'm bending up to that, that uh, basically the 14th fret on the B string. And then I'm tapping up at the 20th fret. Hmm. 
it's kind of the same thing yeah. that you were doing. And then bending oh, and back then down. Down to, to G, yeah. that minor seven, which yeah. really gives it that uh, dominant sound. Ooh, that's awesome. That's so you beautiful. can do a lot of really cool things like this. And then, you know, you could slide, slide into um, any chord tones. Here's one that I actually figured out right before I got here, and I was practicing this because I thought this was really cool. So I guess this would be um, an E. Uh, wait, actually, what that? Mm -hmm. Does it resolve to, to A? I'm not actually sure. It, I, it, I just figured this out. That's what it sounds like. It's like. So can we play it in context without the chords real quick? Sure, I, yeah. I just want to kind of figure this out, what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so. Okay, yeah. So basically, I'm I'm kind of taking this this lick, this pretty um, common lick, which basically is I'm putting my uh, third finger on the eleventh fret of the G string, and then my pinky is barring the twelfth fret on the B and E string. And this is kind of a kind of a stock country esque mm -hmm. lick, but then I'm tapping. I'm playing these notes in succession with the bend, and then I'm tapping there, or maybe. I don't remember how I did this. <laughs> 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 it was really cool when I did it downstairs, and now it's I can't still figure cool it out. Sounding. It's like a puzzle. We'll just let the audience figure it out. Where would you go if you were Shu? What would you do next? Yeah, it might be that. <laughs> like it sounds like you're, you're, you're yeah, it sounds like you're resolving into the next chord tone, which is beautiful. So there's a lot of ways that you can do it. Like, um, so I was experimenting with two ways to resolve that, which basically the first way was like that. But I didn't really like that because the notes kind of lose it. Uh, yeah. lose the sound because sure. there, there's nothing yeah, there's attacking it. Yeah, there's only so much sustain that you can so do there. So what I figured out instead is to do this. So I g I'll, I'll bend back down with that tap and then I'll use my ring finger and I'll take my first finger go down to the eighth fret and slide it back up to the ninth fret. Like that. Which sounds a little bit better, but... It sounds I really cool. <laughs> it does, I, I have yeah. to I have to mess around with it more. It's like that is advanced though. I mean, yeah. like that's it's that's really hard. Being able to use that to transition into another chord ceases it from being a stupid guitar trick to an actually very functional guitar trick. Yeah, and there's I mean, there's just so much stuff you can do with that that hasn't really been explored all that yeah. much. Like you could be bending that and tap a different mm -hmm. string or whatever, right. and, and bend that one like a. Oh, man. I don't know. You could do so many things with it. It's just kind of one of those. The guys that do this, uh, well, okay, uh, the Helicasters is who comes to mind. I don't know if anybody knows about this. They were basically three dudes that were known for doing session work, uh, and yeah. they all were all country players. Yeah. And they all they all did a little bit of extra stuff, like one of the guys uh, toured with Elton John and Tina Turner and folks like that. So, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and yeah, they decided to do an album to impress each other, basically. And there's a, a ton of that on their version of Orange Blossom Special. There's lots of pedal steel licks with standard guitars. You know, maybe oh, awesome. maybe a B bender in there once or twice, but most of the time it's it's all just it's six and a half minute version of Orange Blossom Special. It's all just stupid guitar tricks. It's nice. one of my favorite things to listen to. It always makes me happy. Um, but yeah, like there's there are applications for this stuff, and uh, you just have to be willing to experiment. Yeah. Again, like you're still experimenting with this. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the thing about guitar, it's electric guitar especially. It's such a young instrument. Like it really is. So yeah. many, especially the right hand side of of guitar playing. Like there's still there's still so much to be discovered. Like what you can do with it, and right. that's just one of those very guitar-y things that you can't do on any other instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Take that harpsichord. Awesome. Thank you both. Of course. Much yeah, appreciated. Thank you. Uh, hey, we're going to keep on steamrolling because normally we try to keep this to an hour. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. We've already gotten rid of our uh, 
<laughs> We've already gotten rid of our, our halfway break. So uh, if Tawny is uh, is holding on to codes, you know, any time you want uh, to, to go, she's weapons free. She can she can do whatever she likes to do uh, with the codes. Uh, uh, but they will be uh, they will be flowing later on in the show if they haven't already. Uh, my name is Dan Amrick. I'm your community developer. And what we're doing today is uh, is uh, stupid guitar tricks here on Rocksmith Encore. Encore is our chance to cut loose a little bit and uh, play things, uh, show you things, talk about things, discuss things about guitar and bass, everything from the physics of music on through to how to build a pedal board. Uh, and, uh, and today, just what are the little things that you've acquired over the years as a note tracker, as a player? Uh, what are our, our note trackers in-house? Uh, what do they do for fun, or what have they done before on other uh, on other songs that uh, might be kind of fun to talk about and uh, show you? So that's what we're doing right now with Sam Schwartz. Actually, Sam uh, is here, and Sam actually was working on some of those shoe licks that you, that she was just showing. I heard yeah, you I was over like, there. I was, I was like, trying to figure out oh how yeah, he did that. How is he doing he, that? His, uh, what was it? Mm. Something like that. He was doing one of those. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. You do have to understand that the no trackers do share, like, oh, how are you doing that stuff with each other all the time? Right. So uh, some of this is like, oh, I hear something in the other room. Hey, would you guys be willing to do that? So sure. I think it's nice that you guys are all open to learning from each other, yeah. too. You know, I mean, that's kind of the trick, right? Yeah, like, sometimes it's always cool to hear something like that, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, How can I do that? Yeah. That's, that's, that's Let's ridiculous. That <laughs> Let's see if we can make that happen. So speaking of the Helicasters, this is one trick that I know that the Helicasters did, which is behind the nut bends. Right. This has been a thing. We, we've talked about this before yeah. in the stream. I actually did a little bit when we were doing, I think it was Johnny Cash. Yes. Um, and uh, and it's one of those things that just like, um, it brings some, some flavor to your playing that you can kind of only get by doing that exact thing. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how that works. Right? Okay. So it's, it's, going to be harder for you to do if you have a three and three on your headstock because the amount of string length that you have between the nut and where the string attaches to the little guy right here uh, <laughs> i know that there's a name for the it the machine uh, head th thank you yes the tuning uh, post thank you so <laughs> those are all better than what i just said so <laughs> the um, little guy so the little guy uh so the amount of string length that you have actually uh, makes it, th the more that you have, the more you can bend. Right, because right the tension is super tight on these shorter strings, but on the top three strings on a, on a six on a side headstock, right. which is, again, why this is often a country trick, too. I've heard right. it used in country a lot because the Telecasters, Telecasters sort of the default. And, and Stratocasters have this kind of thing. Oh, here, yes. Oh, if you could I rotate I a oh, bit. Hi. Yes. Oh, Sorry. hi. Yes. Thank you. Let's Thank you for directing me. I, I was not. Oh, that's all that. David. So let's, let's talk about uh, how they do this. So let's just do it with a G string real quick and Sure. Bend it up a half step. Right. Now, keep in mind, this is a guitar that has no string trees on it. Uh, yeah. String trees are the little metal posts that you sometimes see on Fender-style headstocks that keep the string tension, like they, they, they clamp down on it a little right. bit. You run it underneath it so that it would, it would it's for tuning stability. Pody, Brian Pody, who built rebuilt this guitar, right. hates string trees. So he removed them, which makes this kind of the perfect right. Thing. This is why can I you do it on a guitar with string trees? You can, but you have to push a lot harder. Okay, right? so, so like that's why I picked this one. No, it's um, smart. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 and, and you have a lot more. And the other thing that's actually kind of like a weird determining factor, but if you look here, um, there's a lot more space between oh, okay. the actual headstock and where the strings are are, are pinned against the nut. Okay. so you actually have more room to push down physically, sure. push down. So, um, so I, I can show you like so. Let's go through how you would do something. Sure. With this, so so just just doing it, you actually want to take one of your fingers, usually your first finger, and you go behind the nut, and you actually press down like on this G string right here, right? You'll press down just a little bit. Now, you're doing that pretty close to the nut. I would have thought you would have wanted to do it in the middle of the string, right? No, Isn't that where the like, tension cause the thing would be the least? Because the thing is, you, want to you usually don't want to just play back here. If, if I was okay. just playing a whole song like this, maybe <laughs> I'd do this. But like the thing is, you're usually like... You don't want to reach any further than yeah. you have to to be off the fretboard. Right, exactly. Okay. So you want to, that, that's one of the reasons that you don't want to have the string trees or why you don't want to do it on like a, like say like a, like a three and three or whatever, right? right? Or, um, or whatever else you might be doing it on. So, so um, a couple of ways that you can use it is if you're if you're going if you're playing something in E, right? So like maybe you're playing a like that's like a, like a sort of a chicken picking thing in E. <laughs> Right, so you can actually get that E to resolve, right? To to that G to resolve to a G sharp, which is the third of E. So 
you can actually get that nice sound. And you can actually do it with the chord in there too. This is the thing that gets really, really tricky. So you can actually play an E minor chord with your ring finger and your pinky fretting the notes on the fretboard and actually bend the note with your first finger. <laughs> Oh, so you can that's do that, yeah. which is really, really hard. It took me a while to. I was going to say that it. is not easy, but it's beautiful. It's when really you do cool. It. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a cool, tricky thing that you can kind of do and get away with if you're like, you know, if, it, it, if it, you're it Brent may, Mason, you look really cool if you do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, or it's a really great start to a solo if you're doing something that's uh, sort of like if you're doing a bluesy chicken picking kind of solo, you can uh, you can start like a solo off with something like that. Yeah. You yeah, know, sort of like I'm here kicking down the door of yeah, the honky tonk. Right, yeah, it's like it's like all right, like, I'm coming in. <laughs> That's beautiful. Right? So you can do it that way, and then the other way that you can use it in context is um, like you can uh, if you ha this is where you really can't have a string tree on here, and you have to okay. have a lot of length on the B string. But you can actually do it uh, like an A, like an A seven, right? So um, if you if you think about it like this, right? So you can have an open mm. A and an open G, and an open B, mm -hmm. right? So there's a, there's a few ways you can do it. The first one is the, the A7 that I'm talking about. So you can play those three strings, and then you, uh, you bend the B string up to a C sharp. That's great. So, and you can get a, and this guitar is like super flexible, which is really cool. Well, Pody builds them right. <laughs> You know, and then uh, and the other one that you can do is uh, on the G string uh, for the G going up to an A. You know, so you can get uh, a lot of cool. Yeah, and, and that note moves independently of anything else that you're playing and fretting. Which right, gives right. it some of that mystery. Like, how are they making that sound? Right. It's well, it's also that the, it's sort of other that notes the, are ringing out. Yeah, the, it's um, it's a really cool way to bend notes uh, that that sounds very stylistic and interesting and different than what you're used to. Um, so, like, and I do a lot of this stuff. Like, I cheat a lot, like uh, bending one note in a chord. So, like, I'll be playing something like uh, like you know. <laughs> You know, you can do it that way too, but it, it just gives it just a little bit of a different flavor when you're doing it behind the nut. So. Sure. So that's 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 the that's the behind the nut. That's, that's the behind you, the nut that's, band. That's, that's how you do it. So I had I had one uh, one extra thing I wanted to show. Yeah. Because um, I got a couple more things here on the list. I but is this specific I've to b to nut uh, to bending? Uh, it's it's sort of like an extension of the country stuff. So we'll okay. keep a clean tone. Yeah, for this yeah, one, But sure. it was kind of what Andrew was talking about. I wanted to expand on like doing like an open string lick because I actually I do have tabs for this one. I can send it out like later. Doing oh. the. That sounds suspiciously like Jerry's Breakdown. It's inspired by that. So it's Jerry's Breakdown is this. So Jerry's Breakdown. Which is which is a lot of open strings, but yeah. I thought, I was like, I actually played this thing and I was like. And if you replace every one of those notes that has an open string uh -huh. with an open string, you get open. I see. Right, so instead of you do... Yeah. It just gives it a different... It's a totally different f uh, flavor to it, you know? Right. And I can just put that one on the forums for people. I'll sure. Oh, that'd be great. I'll, I'll send out a PDF of that to you. Thank you. Um, when I get back home. Um, but I just I would just wanted to throw that out there. No, that's I'm glad just, you did. That's such a fun one. Uh, um, I've got tap harmonics. Tap harmonics. Let's get dirty. Okay, we'll get a dirty tone on here. You're watching Rocksmith Encore. We're obviously not going to keep it to an hour today. We've got too much good stuff. So um, Andrew was actually talking about uh, doing like sort of these these kind of harmonics where you're uh, yes. going twelve frets above, right? Uh, and then picking the note while lightly having your fret. Uh, Lightly having your uh, first finger hover over that note that's 12th fret above, above whatever, fret. whatever you're fretting. Right, so you can get that that way, but if you want to tap them, you can do that too. So you can. 
which creates a really cool like so I use it I'd, I'd use it like a lot when I'm doing like slappy acoustic stuff which mm -hmm. is kind of cool actually could you give me a clean tone I'll show you kind of uh, how this works so if you're like right you're doing something maybe like uh, on the sound oh it's beautiful you know yeah it needs a little more dirt to like really shine. Sure, yeah, you you need that mild overdrive. You know, you can get a lot of really cool sounds out of that. So I like it clean, so honestly. It, I like it, that it's clean really sound. Cool, it's really cool, clean. If you can get it to really ring, really yeah, you can you can get a lot of really cool stuff. Uh. You know, you can do that. Really, you know, <laughs> That's you can, so it, great. It, it's super funky and super cool, and it just, like, lightens up your plan a lot. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it just gives it a whole other dimension. That but it takes know. practice. you got to know where you're aiming. you got to know where your left hand is in relation to your right hand. So You've got to be able to, to uh, uh, figure out 12 frets on the great fly. Great point. Yeah, so, so a way to practice that is actually so um, you uh, first learn how to tap your scales. Mm-hmm. This might sound kind of weird, but like learn how to like um, like if you're doing like Anthony was showing like an A minor uh, a, a minor pentatonic, right? So try and do an A minor pentatonic. Oh, okay. And tap the notes. Tap the octave. Well, yeah, that's tap it. Right, like that, and then the extension of just doing a tap harmonic. Once you understand the technique, that's not a big bridge to build. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. that's not such a hard thing to conceptualize once you understand. The sure, once you once you know where you're going. Right, exactly. But yeah, never never leave the house without a map. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and then the last thing I'm going to show you guys. Uh, you're going to use the B word, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's buckethead. Bucket it's buckethead time. So, um, uh, so toy machine sh just he, went. He like, actually what? He, what? he what? actually asked me if I was going to show in the chat room today because oh. I was in the chat room <laughs> and he was like, "So you're going to show the nubbin?" And I was like. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, so uh, what is nubbin? So for <laughs> for whatever reason, this is the Guitar World uh, article that I Guitar One article that I read like uh, maybe a million years ago. Yeah, uh, when I was just a child, and in this article, um, Buckethead refers to his tapping technique as nubbing, which makes a lot of sense when you hear it for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's very like song amatopia, if you will. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but but like. There's a couple different ways that he does it. So let's go through uh, a couple of the examples. So the first one is just two fingers. And instead of just tapping like so, you actually take two of your fingers and you tap two frets that are adjacent to each other. And you can actually glide up and down. So so there's okay. that. And then... And it, 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 once you got that down, you can start doing three finger tapping. So, and you can and you can reflect what's going on in your in your, in your uh, left hand. Your left as well. hand. So you do three, two, one. And uh, that's a good exercise to do. Sure, three, sure. Two, one, three, two, one, or four, three, two, one. It's been a while since I've done it with that. Yeah. And then the full the full experience that goes a little haywire. Total is where, nubbin. Where yeah yeah extreme nub. extreme nubbin. Extreme nubs. Uh, so so uh, so what he does he actually puts his palm on top of the fretboard like this. I've seen photos of this, but didn't know what he was playing yeah, when he did so, it. So he does random tapping, and he's muting with the palm of his hand and tapping with his left and right hands at the same time. Okay. And it sounds really crazy like a machine, uh, but you can... I was going to say, we're missing a decryption key. And then you can continue with... Right. 
It sounds awesome. It sounds actually. really it's cool. Super great. It's a super cool sound. So, um, but yeah, that's a really great one to do. That's nubbin. That's that's nubbing. And then See, I, I expected you would come out here and show us some hot country licks, but the nubbin, I was not prepared. Well, for those the are nubbin. all. Those aren't as stupid as this. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like. Yeah, again, the musical context of where you'd want to use that is very specific. Well, yeah, I mean, you can you can sneak it into like a rock solo, and like the singer might be a little mad, but they'll also be like, "That was kind of funny." You know, right. Like <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can do something something like that and totally sneak. So it did in. the whole the whole room just turns like, "What was that?" Yeah, right, what as was soon that? as you do that, yeah, it's a cool little sound to sneak into your it playing. Is. You know, that's um, really great. So. So that's basically that's basically it. I had one more actually that I could I could fire do. away. Just a, just a sweet uh, little one. So Shu came over to my house a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we basically like we just jammed for like seven hours. And one of the things that like at the end of the day, like my brain was starting to get fried, but I started doing this thing where um, I would start picking a and making my guitar sound like a Leslie with my whammy bar. Ah. I have a Stratocaster too, and has a similar like uh, whammy bar spring tension. Sure. Yeah. Here so. I've tried to do that, and I've never had the facility to it's, do it's, it. It's down picking. Yeah. That's what's really hard about it. So you're like... You're holding and depressing the tremolo bar. So you just... All you have to do is pick while you're holding the trem bar. Okay. So... I'm getting the Leslie vibe. So for the right. folks who don't know what a Leslie is, uh, the Leslie was a... a, a it's a rotating speaker that was popular on Hammond B3 organs yeah, especially yeah, yeah. and it became a staple of organ music and you'll hear like a uh, you'll hear a, a a solid tone and then suddenly that tone will start to uh, oscillate it'll start to s sort of flutter a little bit yeah. and that's because there is a physical speaker cone rotating in a speaker cabinet right like if you have a B3 like that's what right. that's what the B3 is sort of like the sound of the, the B3 yeah, to a that lot of people like yeah that, that that sound is coming from a rotating speaker right and so you can Kind naturally of create that yeah you can kind of create that doing this yeah um but it was just like a funny thing i was like maybe that'll work sure. stupid guitar tricks so. i mean a lot of guitarists wound up using leslie cabinets because they're like i want that sound on my guitar the beatles right. used it very famously right. or, uh, and, osnoy like, is the guy who uses that sound a lot yeah fusion guitar player really cool really so good so yeah that's great that's yeah and that's, that's thank it. you i'm sure you have more stupid guitar tricks uh, yeah but, but we we'll, gotta keep it going yeah we'll we see gotta keep it going. we gotta bring in brian pody because it wouldn't it would this show would not be complete without mr pinch harmonics uh showing up but all too true uh thank you uh sam you're not shoe you're sam but that's kind of a compliment I'll right take it. yeah I'll take exactly it. <laughs> uh you're watching the tail end of uh rocksmith encore this week uh or this month rather this session once a month we do rocksmith encore it's sort of our free-for-all we get to decide what we want to do we make up a show uh, and this time it's stupid guitar tricks. It's little tips and tricks, little uh, uh, do hickeys that you can do on the guitar that uh, some of our note trackers have done. Uh, and things that you might be able to incorporate in your playing or things that you might just want to play around with on the couch and you don't feel like playing a full song, but you want to interact with the guitar, you want to get your facility up. These things are all really good for just getting your digits warmed up, getting your, your fingers to feel comfortable on the fretboard. Things like tapping your... Uh, your octaves and doing that harmonic thing that Sam was talking about. You know, that's that's really good muscle memory. It's really good to, to get you to look at the fretboard and know exactly where you want to be, even if you're not going to do it right the first time. So, uh, And, of course, yes, Brian Pody is here. Uh, Brian Pody uh, is famous here for... Uh, for putting a pinch harmonic into absolutely everything, please tell us we're on some some dirty tones so you can give us a pinch harmonic just to remind people who you are. It's like that, but only much more pinchy and harmonic. <laughs> All right, so um, I figured you had a zillion uh, stupid guitar tricks, but uh, it, it actually turned out that you were, oh yes, yes, rotate that way, if you would, please, so that people can see the full glory of your fretboard. Um, it's it's more that you have more on your plate than you have tricks that you can do because you're very busy right now. Yeah, th things I'm are sorry. busy. I'm present, so. But I was like, please come on and do like one thing, and you're like, well, I can do the satch pinch and whammy crossover. <laughs> so I think you I, named it. That. I did name it that. So I, but that that was just my reference so that you would know what we had talked about. You're like, well, it's a satch. I've seen the tr trick that Satriani does, mm -hmm. where you do a whammy bar and then you reach your hand over. And I was like, but I don't know what happens. Like, what is the sound that you're making? What what is what are what are we talking about? What is this technique? Um, this is he totally does this on like the surfing with the alien album. Yep. Where you just pull the bar down. 
Oh, the, so you're hitting a harmonic as you're yeah, releasing the tremolo it's bar. It's kind of hard to hit the pinch harmonic when the strings are like this. Right. But. That was perfect. That's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yes, I, have, I heard that all over Surfing with the Alien. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So how do you, you just, uh, do you need a Floyd Rose? This is one of the guitars that Pody has built. Kind of, um, I mean, it's too it bad best. Sam took that Strat because we well, could have. You, you can try it with, it. The, with, with the Bigsby that's on the Ibanez <laughs> if you really want to cause damage and or uh, destroy Chris Wu's guitar. It's, it's Chris's, it's fine. Okay, it's yeah, it's not, it's not our guitar. So uh, thank you, Chris Wu, for your generous donation um, uh, of this guitar. If, if you tried it with like a normal <laughs> Strat, all the strings might fall out. Yes. Of the nut. Yes, yeah, so that is the problem concern. with doing extreme whammy bends. One of the reasons that Floyd Rose tremolos are so popular for that is because it does, as as the name called, it's a locking nut system where there's a lock in the nut that keeps the string in the nut and keeps tension there. Oh, that sounds terrible. Let's go back to your guitar. I've, I've made terrible noises. Chris, your guitar is terrible. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um... Yeah, so uh, this is one of those stupid guitar tricks that works depending on what kind of guitar you have. and, and uh, Yeah, it's, you know, it's about having a lot of gain. <laughs> yeah, well, we've and got that. Yeah. We're doing this all, by the way, in, uh, in session mode. If you're wondering how we're doing all this stuff behind, we are still playing this through Rocksmith, but we're doing it in session mode before we've gone into a session, and we've chosen uh, our tones ahead of time. On uh, We're using a PC. You can preset the tones either to your D-pad on a controller or uh, the 1, 2, 3, and 4 buttons mm -hmm. on uh, or keys on your keyboard on, uh, on Rocksmith. So if you, if you find a tone that you like or you, you, you like a tone from a song, you can actually load that song in. You don't have to custom create anything if you don't want, but you can have your... These are the four tones that I want to use the most. Uh, I have the rhythm tone from Harder to Breathe on mine and uh, and the, the lead tone from Funk 49. Those yeah. are my two that I was just like, I can't do better than this. This is what I want guitars to sound like. Yeah, it's nice if you you have something that you really like and yeah. you want to use all the time, even if it's in different contexts. But David go, came Oop. up ahead of time and said, all right, I'm going to build I'm gonna build some tones. I'm going to build a clean. I'm going to build a dirty. And I'm going to build a ridiculous dirty. <laughs> uh, so I assume that's what you're doing. So This is the, the like default. Lead path tone. I'm pretty sure. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, David. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are getting confirmation mm -hmm. that it is. So mm -hmm. Which is do do it one more time. And how do you know where to hit? Uh, like you know, generally when I think of harmonics, I'm trying to figure out where I go, where I pick based on what kind, where I am near the pickups. It's like it's an experience. It is. It's, it's just something you have to try. It's, you play all pinch harmonics all the time. Yes, which <laughs> I'm not surprised. And then you more or less figure it out. Um, I mean, yeah, you could. Kind of choose ahead of time. Right. And then if you can find that exact spot. Yeah. But you can't do this totally. You're, you're, not, you're not removing all the tension from the string because otherwise you wouldn't be able to even hit that pinch harmonic, right? You need right. to have if, a little bit. If you go down too much, it's right. hard to get anything. Any purchase. And then you just kind of get whatever you get when you right. go back up. It's <laughs> so great. <laughs> to me, this is the stupidest guitar trick because this is the one that I grew up with. With you yeah, know, like this is the, all my favorite guitarists and all the metal that was on the radio. I was like, woo, woo. It was like every time somebody <laughs> had to be like, I can do that trick. I can. It's a, you know, and again, a lot of it comes from Van Halen. He did a lot of these kind of yeah. things, and then you had people like C.C. Deville who were like, I, I got that. Hang on, you know. It's it's very much a practice makes perfect kind of thing because it's just sort of feel of like. How much do you pull this thing down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, quite a bit in, <laughs> yeah. in your case. And, you know, I if you had a normal, like, six-point Stratocaster tremolo, you just can't get the strings. You yeah, you can't get them that loose. that loose to pull it off. So, all right. Anything else? Anything else that came to mind that you uh, want to do? I don't know. Does I anyone have any Floyd Rose questions? I have one question from John LR2000. How do you thousand. tune it? Uh, <laughs> patience and alcohol. That's how I learned how to tune a Bigsby. <laughs> Uh, John LR2000 says, why don't some guitars do well for tapping? Are there setup reasons why some guitars, like if the action is too high, then I would assume that could be a factor. Yeah, I mean, if the action's high, you just have to hit it that much harder. Right. Like, you know, play smarter, not harder is kind right. of my Lower action will make tapping easier. Yeah. Uh, it does fret size or fret tallness 
uh, the oh, fret height, I should I should most say. Most of the shreddy guys tend to like really tall frets. They're right. like Dunlop 6100. I like Dunlop 6100s. Yeah, which is what this has, and then it's scalloped, so they're even bigger. Right. Um, but, yeah, if you have really small frets, it just feels kind of different to tap because you don't have as much string to depress. To be fair, most modern rock-oriented guitars come with jumbo fret wire, which is like yeah. the Dunlop 6100 that we're talking about. Generally, guitars that are built for jazz come with lower frets because they want it to be effortless. The less you have to press, then sort of like then you're winning. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a Taylor T5 uh, electric, which is a full hollow body, and that has very low frets, very small frets compared to just both both thin and and, uh, yeah. and short compared to like my Strat or any of mm -hmm. my other sort of and really rock-oriented guitars. The original Gibson Les Paul Custom was the fretless wonder? The fretless wonder because it, it had, had really very small, very low frets because yeah. it was like, you don't even, it, it plays it Itself, you know, and you can understand that that was the. Whereas here, why don't you give people a profile shot of your scalloped neck? Uh, yeah, you can see Pody has carved the wood away in between the actual metal I think frets. There's a picture of this on Twitter. Somewhere. Yeah, there probably is. But this is uh, Ingve Malmsteen uses this, and this is yeah. this is for the comfort of tapping, or what is the the concept? Stupid guitar building, I suppose, it, is what it, we're into now. It's absolutely stupid guitar building. <laughs> like, there's no reason to do this. Right. It's it just, just looks just cool. Yeah, I mean, and you it, wanted to try it. It feels really different. Yeah, well, I'm used to my finger hitting wood when mm -hmm. I'm fretting, and maybe I'm pressing too hard uh, most of Depends the time. Depends on how tall your frets are. Well, okay, that's true. But uh, when I tried to just play like I normally would, just playing rhythm guitar on a scalloped fretboard, not something I recommend, but it felt so weird. It was like all of a sudden, where's the floor? Yeah, you know, there, it's there, like walking, there is no floor. Walking down a staircase and just falling down the stairs, that's kind of what but it felt it like. But it allows you to do nice things like this. So this is the same technique as you could, he's he's just <laughs> pressing in on the fret, uh, you know, off off, you know, on the on the uh, on the fret space. It's like a behind the nut bend, but it's a it's a it's just within mm -hmm. that fret. So so since we're on the topic of Joe Satriani, yes. um, and scalloped fretboards, I took some lessons from a guy who was one of Satriani's like star students. Okay, and he gave me a really hard time about playing this guitar. Because really? it had scalloped frets. He was he was very anti scalloped yeah, frets. Yeah, he was like, oh, you're just gonna play out of tune all the time. And do you? Uh, probably. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Because other than that, that's I think we're gonna. That's we're gonna it for me. It. I mean, it's it's all stupid guitar playing for me. I feel like you have many more stupid guitar tricks, but maybe we'll f see them on another day. Yeah. Uh, for now, we're done. Thank you for tuning in for Rocksmith Encore. Thank you to Tawny for taking care of our giveaways. We were giving away uh, DLC codes for the Steam version of Rocksmith Remastered. So hopefully you got one of those. If not, don't worry. We'll be giving some more away later this week. We'll be back streaming here on Twitch on Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. UTC. And we'll be doing Variety Pack 17. I believe all the songs are known from that. So we've got Lisa Loeb, Grateful Dead, uh, uh, David Bowie. And uh, something else that you can't remember either. Uh, oh, Alien Ant Farm movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so, uh, yeah, we'll be playing all four of those songs here on the stream on Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific. So please do join us. We'll also give away some Ernie Ball gear. We'll give away some more codes. Uh, and we'll be here to take some more of your questions and answers about those songs as well. We'll give you answers. You, you just give us the questions. We don't, we don't need your answers. We, got, we, we can make stuff up all day long, as I think we've just proven over the last hour. Uh, my name's Dan Amrick. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you here on Thursday. If you have ideas for future Rocksmith Encores, uh, we're open to those. Go to rocksmith.com. Check out our forums. That's also where you're going to find some of the, the follow-up material from this one. We will post those tablatures so that you can see some of the stuff uh, in print as well as watching the replay of the show. But pass this one around. Hopefully this is a lot of fun for you. Uh, it was certainly fun for us. And we'll see you on Thursday. See you in 72 hours, everybody. Bye. We challenged people across the country to learn guitar in 60 days with Rocksmith. Here's what happened. Oh, yeah, I should probably turn it up, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> it actually tracks every note you play. And as you totally nail each section, it gets harder. They've got like hundreds of songs from so many bands. The fact that you're plugging in a real guitar is awesome. I can't even imagine being where I am in such a short time. Rocksmith costs way less than any private lessons you can do. On day 60, I've got awesome guitar riffs that I can pull out anytime. I feel like I'm a guitar player now. The all new Rocksmith 2014 edition, the fastest way to learn guitar. Start your 60 day challenge today at rocksmith.com. Rated T for Teen.